Okay, so let's look at the other factors that uh, might potentially explain some of the variation in this uh, temperature series. Uh, first of all, we'll take a look at the Nino 3.4 index uh, that, as we know, is a measure of El Nino variability. Uh, I'll choose axis B here as an option uh, to put these on roughly the same scale. Um, and so, as we can see, there is a positive correlation between El Nino and Northern Hemisphere average temperatures. Uh, one of the more uh, obvious uh, examples is the 1997-98 El Nino, uh, one of the largest El Nino events on record that was also on, uh, associated with an unusually warm year. But we see uh, other uh, evidence um, of uh, uh, relationships between El Ninos leading to warmer uh, land air temperatures in a given year and the opposite, uh, La Nina leading to relatively cold uh, temperatures. So when we see the El Nino index, um, this red curve dips down to this uh, extreme negative value. That was an unusually uh, cold year, some, some, somewhere around 1920 or so. Uh, so we might expect that there's um, a, a positive relationship between these two series and that we can explain some of the variation in the Northern Hemisphere temperature series with El Nino. Let's look uh, finally now at the NAO index. Um, and uh, again, we can see a positive relationship. Um, unusually uh, warm uh, years in some cases uh, appear to be associated with uh, the positive phase of the NAO index. Um, so uh, we might expect uh, that El Nino and the NAO uh, can explain some of the remaining variation that our energy balance model simulation didn't explain. Uh, and our next step will be to try all three factors at once.